next up. But I do know that we had a fabulous new release yesterday, which included lots of fabulous stamps, dies, and some embossing folders as well. So if you didn't have a chance to check out the new release yesterday, I'm here with you today to run through all of the new projects, products even, and then maybe stamp a few things that you ask me to. The lovely Orem and Joanna will be behind the alt new badge today. So if you do share this live stream as well, you are in with a chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the alt new store. Hopefully everything is going live now. I did have a little bit of a hiccup um, a minute ago, but hopefully if you are there, please give me a wave because I would like to know that we are doing things. I'm not doing this all by myself. So, I am going to move you guys down. Yay! Hi, Nesmara. Yay! So, okay, we're good. There are people there. And thank you, Darlene, for sharing. And hello there, Sue and Stacey. So, I am going to move you guys down now so we can take a look at the new products. And then please let me know your favorites as well. I'm always curious. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of nosy. <laughs> so... Hopefully you can tell me what your favorites is. Hello there, Lynn and Cece and Joni. Thank you so much for sharing and for being here with me. I do have my stamping mat today and I always forget it. So I'm glad that I do have that today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run through the new things. You may have seen these on the blog hop which happened yesterday. But it's always nice to just go through the new things and then you can pick up to your favorites and then let me know which ones that you want to see all stamped up. So this one is the airbrushed flowers and you can see that we do have two beautiful blooms in here. We have a number of different layers and two different styled leaves. We have a single leaf and a three, um, I was gonna say three layer leaf. It's not a three layer leaf, it's a three leaf. Oh, on the back we do have the layering guide and also inside you're going to get some inspiration and I probably would have been looking for this so this is the matching die set that you can get that cuts out the two blooms and the two leaves on there hi there everyone Anya and Janet and Gemma and Janice Janice sorry okay so that one was the airbrush flowers also there is the mask stencils that's really easy to mask and stencil away with this one this one is the spotted orchid this is so so cool so we have a large orchid bloom which you can use with or without these little spots as well as three different leaves on there so we do have the layering guide on the back as well as that you can get the die set which is going to cut out that bloom as well as the leaves and we have the mask stencil so i'm trying to run through these as quickly as i can okay Hello to everyone that has popped in as well. So this one is the Vintage Garden. I'm not more, I think this one may be one of your favorites. So we have two large blooms. I'm sorry, mine has been pretty well loved so far. Two large blooms as well as a number of different leaves and some really fabulous sentiments in there. So we do have the die set which will cut out those blooms and the leaves. And for this one, we do have the simple coloring stencil. So we're gonna be able to add some stenciled details and shadows into this one over here. Okay. So next up, we have the Enchanted Roses. So we have a really beautiful trailing rose. It has little um, thorns in here. It's very, very detailed. So this one is quite large, as you can see. So this is a six by eight stamp. So you can see that that rose image itself is around about seven and a half by, oh, I would say around about five inches. But you don't necessarily have to use the whole image. You could just use this part if you wanted to, this part over here, or even this part as well. It's a really great one to play with and create various different effects just using that. So that one doesn't have a matching die. That is just one on its own. Next up, we have Versatile Vases 2. Now, this is the next in the, the series of the Versatile Vari Vases. 
and we have six different razors here of three different styles. So we have the same style and a small and a large as well as this one and then the tubular one as well. The sentiments on here are really, really pretty and they are in the same font as the one on Versatile Vases 1. Um, so you can really play around with those ones. So that is the stamp set. We do have the die set for this one and also the mask stencil. Now there are two 6x6 stencils in here which incorporate all of the various images from the stamp set. I am sorry, ladies, if I'm going a bit quick for you, adding in all the links. But I'll go slower when I stamp, I promise. Next up, we have the block sentiments. So you can see that we have various different blocked sentiments. And we also have ones in little banners. We have strip ones as well as oval and circular ones as well. As well as the stamp set, we do have the matching die set, which is just going to cut out like the flag images and the oval and circle ones. The strip ones are really easy to cut out by themselves, so I don't think we need ones for that one. Happy New Year if I haven't seen you as well, everyone. Okay, so that is all of the 6 by 8 Now we're on to the smaller stamp sets and the standalone little things that we have too. So this one is all things A. We have a really large A in here as well as sentiments that are going to coordinate with the A theme. So we have things like you're an angel, attitude is a big thing that makes a big, a little thing that makes a big difference. So lots of different sentiments which revolve around A, but you could definitely use this for a monogram card or something on that elk. So as well as the stamp set, we do have the matching die set. Now this one is going to cut right up to the edge of this. So it's not going to leave a white border on this floral A. Okay, now we have a little bit of love. This one is so cool. So we have two larger hands and two more feminine hands on here. And this one has lots of beautiful sentiments revolving around love. So when you pop these two hands together, they will create kind of a heart over here. I didn't really need to do it myself because it's right there. But as well as the stamp set, we do have the matching die set, which is going to cut those hands out. And we also have the simple colouring stencil. So if we can look at this card here, you can see that part of the stencil will colour the hand. And then you also have a separate piece for the little nail images, which is so cool. Okay, so that one is a little bit of love. Now we have the standalone dies. So this is a simple greetings. We have hello, hugs, you and thanks. Both of them, all of them even have two dies, one with the de detailed words and then a shadow. So you can add a little bit of a difference to each of the elements that you use for that one. We then have the Illusion Heart die set and we have two different dies in here. So we have the heart, which is very detailed and delicate. And then we also have a love sentiment. So you can see this is all in one piece. So you're not going to have to search around for the letters for this sentiment. It's always going to cut out in one go there. Last but not least for the dies is I seen that Susan is it's kind of like in this one. This one is the grid cover die. So this is going to cut a four and a quarter by five and a half panel with various, well, lots of different squares within it. So you can really play around with this, maybe pop different colours in there or maybe um, do a white on white. It's completely up to you how you use it, but I'm sure that you're all going to have different ideas using this one. Next up, we have a 3D embossing folder. Yay! I know that lots of people are loving these. So this one is the Ribbon Ways. If I open this up, you can see that we have all of like the valleys on one side. So this is where all, they all dip in. And then we have all of the mountains on the other side. So they're all um, convex and concave. Concave means goes in. And that's going to give you two various different effects. So you're going to have a really great side. And then one, one that I've doodled on, I am sorry, but you've got a different effect 
that side as well. I was just trying out my white pens. <laughs> That's all I was doing. So that is the ribbon waves. Then we have the swirl motif. And you can see that this one again has the mountains on one side and then the ribbons on the other. Mountains and then valleys, sorry, ribbons. Where am I getting that from? Oh, they're embossing folder. So this one has a border strip. So this is gonna add a really elegant touch to your card projects. And I've just used it along the edge here. So you can use it either vertically or horizontally on all of your projects. So that is it. I've got through everything. Please let me know your favorites, what you want me to stamp up, what you want a little bit of a closer look at, because I will try my best to indulge. So what I'm gonna do first as I'm waiting for people to pop in, I did wanna show you a couple of different looks with the beautiful um, spotted orchid. Hazel, yes, I can do the versatile vases with the spotted orchid. I, I'm going to try and mix things up as much as I can so we can get a lot in. I know that I have rambled on a wee while going through the products and there's half the products on the floor so I will need to pick those up. So I just wanted to show you three different looks kind of using the same colors so i'm just gonna move so i can see okay so we have the same colors on the orchids but i've changed the look of the spots so this one it doesn't have any spots so it's this layer here this one i've just used a darker color than the ones that i was using in the flowers that's going to this one's the lightest and it's gonna go up a little bit, but then this one for a really high contrast, I use the obsidian black. So it gives really different colors there. So um, I will maybe cut. I have a couple of these already stamped up. So I'm gonna go with the orange one because we do have so what I did use for these ones was the beautiful um, sun-kissed orange cream, autumn blaze, and the fire brick. So that is the, I'm trying to think of the word, warm and cozy ink collection for that one. And then I used the green meadow for the greens, so that's the firefly, the grass field, and also the shadow creek for there. The spotted orchid is really, really cool. So I'm just gonna cut around those so I can run those through my die cutting machine. I'm hoping I have the die, and I didn't. <laughs> I was gonna say did, but I, I don't. I have another die. So I'm just going to run that through my mini blossom and then we're going to take the versatile vases. I know people want to see the vintage garden and I will definitely do that. I already have a couple of those stamped up too. just find it easier if I do prep some things we can get into a lot more. Okay so there we go. Hi Rang and everyone else that has popped in so far. Lovely to see you here. I have I actually have an orchid in the kitchen and it has bloomed quite a few times, which has surprised me. So every time it dies off, I think, oh that that's gonna be it. But it still keeps coming back. And I don't know if it's because it's above the kettle and I keep putting the kettle on because I gotta tell you I drink some coffee so I think it's the steam from the kettle all the time that um makes the orchid think that it's maybe in some tropical rainforest somewhere so that's my little <laughs> antidote about my orchid okay 
thing is the orchid doesn't go with my kitchen whatsoever so my kitchen's blue and the orchid is purple and it, it's very very pretty but it's just not the right purple that goes with the like blue color that we have going on in there mm, it's really okay it's bloomed about three times and mm, I, I don't know what i'm doing i just keep cutting the stalk off every time it dies Oh, yeah. Here we go. Because that's the only plant that I can actually keep alive. I've actually killed cactuses before now. Okay, so I've cut out the leaves and my little flower. Okay, just pop them over. I can deal with those. <laughs> in the morning all of these stamped out and I think I'm going to go for this very pretty one here and what I want to do is I want to add a water line so to add in this line all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some masking tape, uh, masking tape and I'm just going to run that along where I want my water line to be now with this one, I didn't do it as I should because I should have used the matching mask stencil to kind of contain the ink when I'm going to be doing my ink blending. Yeah, I'm in the UK too, so I think it's because it's above the kettle. I think that can be the only explanation for why it keeps coming back yeah Dorothy it is very pretty it is and it does stand out okay so we're just gonna pop that around my little thing and I'm gonna go with some volcano lake <laughs> so oh yeah I'm just not great and then yeah, I, I've i surprised everyone with this little orchid that we have going on. Hmm. So this is the Volcano Lake, and I'm just adding it mostly around that line that we have there with the masking tape. And then what I'm going to do, as you can see, I didn't add too much on there. I'm going to remove this masking tape. And you can either keep that line as fresh as it is there, but I do want to tone it back a little bit and maybe kind of make this look like a tinted vase or vase, wherever you're from. I'm just, I still don't know which one to say. No matter which one I say, my husband always corrects me, so I just give up and just whichever one comes out, vase or vase is the way it's going to be. And then when I lift that up, yay, we can see that we've got that kind of effect that there is water within there. I am going to cut this out. I do have a matching dye, but just so I don't have to mess around too much, I'm just going to trim that out. But again, the matching dye is available. And it will cut this out perfectly, not like I'm doing right now. And I do have that over inking from that one that I kind of mistakenly did. There we go. So there is the vase cut out, bars, vase. Okay, so when I'm popping this one in, I do want a stalk. So I'm just going to grab a green. And that's going to be too dark for my liking. So I've got the olive and this is the artist marker. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down and just kind of swoosh, swoosh it in, just one. The diameter of this brush, Dorothy, is ooh, looking for my ruler, is around about three quarters of an inch. Or if you do centimeters, that's about two and a half. 
yes yeah, so an inch i don't know where i got what i'm talking about <laughs> that's an inch and then about two and a half centimeters <sighs> it's late can i say it's late hi there Nerali. Nerali. i'm sorry if i got that wrong i'm rubbish i'm gonna grab the piece that popped on the door okay because i know that people did want to see this beautiful 3D embossing. This is the beautiful swirl motif. And you can see that it does have an out or an in. And I'm going to go with the in. I like it when it's kind of looks like it is faux letter press. So I'm going to stick that into place on that, that side. As you can see, I'm just adding the ink to the side that's not going to go over my embossing. I do need a little bit of a shadow down there. I can't put a vase on a card without grounding it. So what I have is my two greys. I have Evening Grey and also Morning Frost from the Artist Markers. And I'm just going to add the Evening Grey under that. You can barely see it. But it's going to make a huge difference to grounding this on your card. And then I'm just going to take that morning first and kind of just scribble that out a little. Yay! You can see it's not floating around on the card. Don't worry, Drippa. So happy to see you. We don't have a storage tray as yet, Dorothy. But hopefully where it can be something that we put in the works. So I have my beautiful spotted orchid there. The little brushes are so cool. I love them. I just keep mine in the little pot at the minute and I've just chopped the top pieces off. They stay in there perfectly. So that's why I keep mine at the minute. I'm going to add a little bit of dimension just with that. And then the leaves I can add in with some glue. No worry, Jane. No worries. I, mean, I like to play. So I'm just going to pop that one down there. I kind of want all the leaves popping downwards, I think. And one more over the end. There we go. Thinking about it, I may have done these in the tropical forest colours just to match that green stem. But I don't think it's too far off. So there we go. We used three different of the products in that one. Okay, vintage garden. Okay, so I've already stamped everything out from the stamp set. Okay, I know. Sue is going to be so impressed with how much I've actually prepped today. And I want the simple colouring stencil. So I'm going to show you how quickly and easily it is to add the layers to these images just using these stencils. So I'm going to pull those out. Now there is one for, I'm going to move my little mini blossom over a little bit. There is one for this one here. And then we have the other images so we have the little one and also the other leaves so for this one how I line it up is I do the center points and then also these leaves really quickly and easily just pop that into place I'm going to add a little bit of tape oh why not let's go with my favorite colors <laughs> let's do it so I'm going to go with Lagoon and also olives. So I'm going to use my little blender there and then my blender there. Okay, so this is the Lagoon. Same little brush that I used for the Volcano Lake because it's the same kind of colour family. And I'm just going to add this to the flowers. Now I'm trying to add more into that centre and then kind of blend it out a little bit. You can add a darker colour in if you want or you can just layer up the ink so if you do only have like one ink color you can definitely just um layer up the ink to create this kind of gradient effect there 
Okay. Yep, this one is so pretty. Okay, and then once I've done that one, I'm going to go with the olive, my favorite green. And I'm going to add the little leaves in. And this will take you so much quicker at home because I'm jabbering on. So I'm sorry about that. So there we go. So that is that beautiful image there. I need to put that over to the side to wash that one. Now I've misplaced my other one. There, there it is. Mm. Hopefully it's not just me that puts things down and never realizes where they put them. There we go. Let's go with the leaves first on this one. So that's the olive again. And then the lagoon. Hazel, no, I do not. And if I wa were to, col um, to clean them, I would just do it on a piece of paper or kitchen towel and just rub them until no more of that ink came off. You can definitely clean them with kitchen roll and um, with a baby wipe that works also you can run them under the tap and get rid of the ink it may still stain because when you do get these these have really bright white bristles they may stain um but they're still going to work perfectly just as long as the water runs clear or when you rub this down onto a piece of kitchen towel it doesn't transfer any ink i think you're good to go that way hopefully that explains it Okay, and then we also have the leaves too. Do these pretty quickly. So there's one. And I felt the need to do a count. One. Ah, ah. Okay, there is two. Then we have this one. And then this one over here. Ta -da! So that is how you can quickly and easily add a beautiful layer using the simple colouring stencil. You could also then add extra in with your pencils. You can add some extra in with your artist markers. It's completely up to you. I'm going to just pull you in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this one is the watercolour pencils. I'm not actually going to use them as watercolour pencils, I'm just using them as pencils themselves. And this one is the Dewdrop, so it's very close to that ink that we've used which was the volcano lake but just adding a couple more scratches with this color you can really add a lot more difference to this one oh yay sue so excited that you got new things through and you have more new things on the way i think that's always the best when you know that those things come in do you love nice parcel day? Okay, so there is that. Let's cut this one out, shall we? So we do have the die for this one. Okay, you know what? I'm going to fussy cut it because I can't find it in my my things my things i think it's because i try to rush too much that's probably what it is i think you're a bit too close now i'm gonna move you up okay hopefully there we go okay Maybe I did it too quickly and the camera was just shocked. <laughs> I didn't brace it. I didn't tell it I was going to do it. So please let me know your favourites. 
Also, what you want me to go with next. I'm sure I've got time for a, another one. I was going to pop this onto that background that we already have created with the 3D embossing called the other one, the Ribbon Waves, because that was navy, and I thought these two colours, the beautiful Lagoony colours, which are my favourites on that bright green, would work really well. But if we were to do that, put it, there it is. Okay. Now, if I was to pop this on here, it's not going to I can't actually emboss the embossing folders because my die cutting machine's over there and it's too loud but so I did use the first embossing folder on this one which was the swirl motif so I did make sure I have um the two panels done with them this one is the ribbon waves now I did this on navy cardstock and if you would to fussy cut like me or use the die you will get kind of a white edge around here okay so what i would do is i have the desert night and all i'm going to do is quickly you can take your time at home but go around that white border with kind of matching color of your cardstock. So if you do have many different colored cardstocks and you have the alternate artist markers, I reckon that you've got one that would probably be pretty close to the cardstock that you have there. Okay, I've just seen a request for the airbrush flowers. So I will do that one. That. I love the navy cardstock. It's one of my favorites. And it's one that I always have panels cut with. I do think I'm more of a navy girl than a black girl. So if I'm going to go out and buy a dress or pants or anything, I will probably go with the navy over the black. Not as if I need to go out and buy any clothes at the minute because, you know, we're all in our pajamas crafting, right? Or is that just me? <laughs> Sorry, I've gone quiet and concentrating. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, the embossing folders are amazing. I love how like trends have come full circle because when I first started crafting, embossing folders were big then. And then they kind of, you know, dwindled out. But now I think they're going to be back again because they do add so much texture to your cards really quickly and easily too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So close. There we go. That one was the Desert Night, which was from the Artist Marker Set A. Sorry, everyone. Set A. So when I pop that down now, even though you can still see the edge a little bit, it's not as, you know, in your face as that white border that you have there. Add a little bit of foam tape to that one. Let's go there. Um, we need a sentiment. Let's go with these. And you can definitely add some really great sentiments from that one. And we're definitely going to need. Ooh, I like that. This too shall pass. We do have the die set. For this one too. Just trying to find myself a piece of cardstock. 
seriously, when I start Facebook Lives, <clears throat> I have everything really neat and clean so I can get at it straight away. Halfway through, it's gone. <laughs> there is no organization whatsoever. Um, I think I should definitely take a picture of my mess after I do my crafting because mm, very, very messy. And then I always leave it till the morning. Okay, there we go. So, stamp that. I am going to heat set that just a little minute. I'm going to go right up to the edge of this one because we went through all that time and effort of adding the blue edge to the flower. It would be a bit weird if I was to leave a white edge on this now. I'm thinking I might want to put some gold behind that. If I was to do it, but hey, we're doing things now. Yeah, this is the one with the wave. I think it is so, so pretty, and there's so much texture in it as well. So I'm just going to pop that on. Hopefully, we can see the amount of texture that we have in that background. Now, with the embossing folders backgrounds, I would definitely say adhere these down to your cardstock with a wet glue, because that's gonna be able to grab onto other things and then pop that down. Okay, so someone did request the airbrushed flowers. So I will do that one. I do have another embossed one there. I don't actually have this one stamped up so this is going to be the first time I'm doing some actual stamping today. Let's go here. So I'm just going to go with one of the flowers. Okay. And please let me know if you would like either Lagoon colour flower or a yellow flower or a pink flower because they're the colours that I have out to the side of me. Oh yeah, it looks so cool with the craft card stuff. So I'm going to stamp my outline first anyway. Ooh, pink. Okay, so it's like a pinky blush colour. Hopefully we're okay with that one. Okay. Now with the airbrush flowers, it doesn't actually have a base layer on the stamp set. But you, if you do get the mask stencil, you can add a layer with that. Now I'm trying to find my mask stencil and like I said everything is just hiding from me. Hmm. Yeah so if you do have the mask stencil which is possibly on the floor now you can add aha it's here it was hiding under the ink okay so if you do have the mask stencil, you can add the base layer. Okay, so we have pink, lagoon, and yellow. Mm, pink came first. Sorry, everyone. So, <coughs> frog in my throat. So what I'm going to do is going to pop this around the image. I would recommend you do this first before you stamp because you may move some ink around of the this bit. Um, but I think we should be okay. And we do have a little bit of a stalk there, so I'm going to add a little bit of olive onto that bit there first before I start. Let's grab the pink. So I'm going to go with a pink pearl. <laughs> yeah, 
movie all the time. I stack things up and I think, oh, that'll be perfect. That'll stay up. No, no, it's not. I'm not great at Jenga today. I should definitely do a bit more practicing with stacking things. So I'm using my little mini ink blending tools and I'm trying to add more colour around the edge. And it's quite soft. So I'm going to remove that off. You can see even if you just use the mask stencil, that's pretty. Right, so I'm going to then do the two layers that it comes with. So I'm going to go with rouge. So I'm kind of mixing colours up for this one. Oops. Let's work where everyone can see, Lydia. Good squish down. And I'm going to align that centerpiece as well as the kind of these petals here that don't actually stamp. There we go. So there is that one. And then I believe this is the right one. Just give it a little wiggle. Yep, yeah, we're good with that one. I'm going to go with Coral Bliss. Again, kind of lining up the sand piece and then the pieces that don't stamp, which is you know, a weird thing to do when you stamp and a layering stamp, but sometimes you gotta do what you want, gotta do. We do have centers for these. I'm gonna go with, ooh, I have pumpkin pie, because you are gonna want something that's gonna go over that pink color that we added with the base layer of this stencil. And then we have a center point, and I have yellow ochre off to the side as well. So there we go. And then we have leaves. Two. Stamp, stamp, inky ink. There we go. There's my ink. This is the first one I've actually cleaned off today. <laughs> I only just realized because I didn't have anything to clean things off with. There's my new year's resolution of clean my stamps before I put them back on the carrier sheet. Gone already. What are we on? Sixth? <laughs> I did try. I tried for a whole six days. Nearly a week. Nearly a week. Uh, let's go with the olive. The base layer of the leaf. Pink Pearl is one of my favourites. I just love the corally colours. Seems I've broken my New Year's resolution of cleaning my stamps. Probably, yeah. Can I pick things up where I left off? Or is that me done now, do you think? And Moss for the second layer. So when I bring this one up a little closer, you can see instead of having like a bold outline, you've got more like little dot images which gradiate out to give you a softer looking flower that way. Okay, so that is that one stamped up. I'm not gonna make a card with that one. I did want to share this little bit of love because I just think it's so, so clever. So I'm just going to take the, the simple colouring stencil and I'm going to take the two feminine hands. I'm just going to make sure that I've got the right one and this is the right way. Because when using the simple coloring stencil, I usually like to use the stencil first and then use the stamp. So let's do some coloring. We have a brown 
blending tool. And I have my beautiful, I think these are delectable, delectable delights, the brown inks. And what I'm going to do is there are matching things. I'm just going to add some colour to the hand shape. So there's one. I'm going to move it over. How about that? I'm going to go with hazelnut for this one. Oh, that one's the larger hand. I wanted the smaller one. And you do have the matching dies for these, so you can cut these out. That one's the hazelnut. And then what you have on here as well is next to the hand you have two like little kind of like sprinkle shapes and then these are going to fit in for the nails so you can give them some really cool manicures let's go with some green because we've got green out so i'm just going to pop that into where it has a space and then move it across and this one could have pink because we have pink out too okay so there we go but you can see that you can you've definitely got a hand shape there so you don't necessarily have to stamp if you want if you're going after a more of a i don't know more of a graphic look with those hands but you do take the matching stamp and pop that over Sorry if my head gets in the way, everyone. It's always good to get right over it so you can see exactly where you're going. But you can see that that is such a cool image. And when you pop them together, they're going to create that really cute heart shape. Okay, so here is a couple of the things that we did. We didn't do this one, but we were kind of going for this color tone. We went for the Vintage Garden and then just remember if you do cut out using the matching die or even um, fussy cut with a little bit of an order, you can definitely add a dark marker to pop that down. Uh, independent Scan and Cutter, if you do message um, support at altenew.com, they will be able to help you in the right way to get a UK supplier. Um, to find new products. So that is all that I've done today. I'm going to move you guys up now. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Thank you so much for spending the evening with me or the morning if you're in New Zealand. I know that one of you is out there. Also, I really do hope that you have a lovely day today and that you have been maybe a little bit inspired or maybe picked up a few tips and tricks today too. Thank you so much for watching everyone and thank you for sharing and we will see you again really, really soon. Bye-bye.